can personal style really be dead? Like, is it non-existent anymore? I have been seeing this conversation crop up on TikTok and literally all over YouTube now, just really kind of having this conversation around what happened to personal style? Where did it go? Like, why is it not seeming to give how it used to give? And I really want to give a different take that I'm not seeing enough people talk about because a lot of the lens and a lot of the way that people are talking about this topic is from the perspective of people who have grown up in or around fashion who either like had parents in fashion or from people who professionally work in the fashion industry right like stylists and personal stylists retail creative directors things like that but i really want to offer a different perspective from somebody who who did not grow up with style who found her personal style later in life and really to give some context plus talk about how you can find your personal style especially without spending money so this is absolutely my personal thoughts like all of my stuff take what you need leave the rest because i'm really all about helping you find what's going to work best to not just make you look good but feel good as well because that's a huge part of personal style now welcome back to my channel if you happen to be new here i am jordan blackwell former materials engineer turned lifestyle content creator behind little miss jb style sharing with you life's possibility through style now grab your drink i have a delicious cardamom rose latte today let's talk about personal style because i don't feel like personal style can be dead okay and i'm seeing a lot of this conversation and it's really not even that personal style is dead because here's the thing Personal style is personal. Like style by definition just means like a specific way in which something is done or presented, right? And then of course, personal. It's up to you. So personal style can never be dead. What really a lot of people are frustrated by for some reason is like why people don't express themselves more through style. Like what happened to like expressive style? What happened to like wearing bold things and really owning who you are? And, and this is very complicated for a lot of reasons. And I think a lot of these people... I don't want to call them out of touch, right? There really is a lack of understanding of context, which is important as to why people dress the way that they dress and why majority of people probably choose what is easy, what is safe, what everyone else is wearing. And I really want to dive into that a little bit and then share tips how I personally kind of overcame those things and those boundaries and those limitations that I did have set on myself, whether by society or self-imposed, to find my style, right? And whatever that looks like for you, because babes, if you like to wear and you feel amazing in the Skims dress, if you feel amazing in those BBL leggings, I'm not going to tell you no. And I think that's the very first, and I think that's the very first like interesting point that all of these people keep like missing because to have expressive style, to have style that like stands out, that is different. You are unfortunately inviting ridicule and who wants that? Like most people are fighting for their lives right now. And this has kind of been true generationally. A lot of people are trying to make it day to day and live their best life and and keeping up with fashion and then expressing themselves in a way that is different you do open that door and this is a conversation i even had with my grandmother and my mom because i'm trying to figure out when we think that just everybody had expressive personal style like across the u.s like when was that really like because a lot of these conversations and a lot of the romanticizing that happens of previous generations it's usually from a snapshot and it's the same frustration we have with Instagram right now. It's like you're just showing like the really glamorous side of yourself. You're just showing the perfect side. And it seems like for some reason everyone's doing that with previous generations fashion as well. Like that one picture was how everyone dressed all the time all the way through. And talking to my own grandmother, talking to my own mother, they weren't concerned with what the celebrities were wearing. They weren't concerned with like what the famous people around them were wearing. They weren't even concerned with like the latest trends. What they were concerned with was everyone in their immediate circle, in your community, and you looked at the people next to you and you kind of said, okay, like compared to what everyone else is wearing, what's kind of really acceptable and what kind of isn't and how do I choose to fit into that? And most people, for the most part, wear what a lot of other people are wearing because they don't want to deal with being judged and today it's way more it's way more likely than it was back in the day like back in the day you know if you ask my grandma it's like some of my her little outfit and did you see what she wore but today people will literally be anonymous on the internet talking about yo i don't like your lashes like ma'am this was a video about my jeans why are you talking about my lashes and most people are not going to willingly put themselves in that situation. I was forced into that situation and I've talked about this and how I improved my style. I grew up in a predominantly white town. So already I stood out and I was different. But on top of that, I couldn't even wear what the cool girls were wearing or what everyone around me was wearing because 
the companies didn't make it to fit people like me, right? I was curvy in the time of Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan, even Tia and Tamara, even Moesha. Like if you think about all the kind of big women, regardless of color at that time, most of them were not a, above a size four. So I couldn't fit in Hollister. I couldn't fit in American Eagle. I couldn't fit in Aeropostale. While I had access to those brands, I couldn't even physically fit in them to try and dress and give myself that association. So by force, by circumstance, I was different and I was othered and I had to learn to accept myself through that at a very young age. Like, oh, I'm just different and I'm gonna be different. I have to be okay with people seeing me differently. Most people aren't gonna do that. Most people are not gonna do that. Most people are not about to open themselves up to that and I don't blame them. Like if I'm already like, dude, I'm just trying to like make it through my day. I'm just trying to get these bills paid. I'm just trying to make it to hopefully get the job of my dreams, meet the love of my life, whatever it is. I'm not trying to dress different and open up a whole other can of worms of problems I don't want to deal with. Like that's just not, a sane person wouldn't really voluntarily do that. They wouldn't. And I really hate that this is like completely being overlooked that truly, unfortunately, you know, that's just a lot of people's thought process. I hope to share my experience to help someone out who might be going through the same thing, not to invite judgment, not to invite someone's negative feedback about what I'm wearing. Like 90% of the time, I'm not sharing this to go, okay guys, now judge me. <laughs> That's not what we're putting stuff on the internet for. And it does take a brave person to show up knowing that that's unfortunately how a lot of people feel is well you put yourself out there and what did you think would happen you deserve this negative feedback you're getting from people so that plays a huge role in what people's personal style is going to be because depending where you live you are not going to be naturally inclined no one is born with style like let's start there no one's born with a crazy sense of style and even after you're born and you start to develop your personality not everyone gravitates to fashion. Not everyone gravitates to style. Not everybody finds that naturally interesting and something that they want to explore. And that brings me into my second point, which time is a luxury. And time not only to worry about what you look like, but time to actually invest in what you look like is a luxury for a lot of people. Whether or not it should be, that's a different conversation, right? But a lot of these stylists and stuff forget like, people have other jobs, like, and some people have multiple other jobs and kids and family, like, you want me to spend what time I have, my free time, researching like garment construction, draping techniques, styling techniques, proportions, what like colors are supposed to go with each other. That's not what most people want to do with their free time. It's not. And that's okay. And that's one of the things that has frustrated me about this conversation is I'm like, if you want people to dress more expressively, shaming them is not the way to get them there. If I've learned anything in this big age of 32, shaming somebody, at least for myself, that has not got me to change my habits. That doesn't stop me from having that extra cookie when I want to have it. That does not stop me from laying on the couch all day when I need a break and I just need to just not. Shaming myself doesn't make that stop. It just makes me feel bad about doing something that really isn't all that terrible to do in the first place. And so that just kind of has rubbed me the wrong way because if you want to invite people to dress more expressively. Shaming is not gonna be the way to do it. Like sitting here talking about why every, why does everyone wanna be basic? Why does everybody like not even trying to have that understanding of where a lot of people are coming from. It just, again, it lacks the nuance that I really wanted to add to this conversation because I've been there, I get it. Like I grew up in a small town in the middle of Wisconsin. I was not trying to dress different if I didn't have to, but I just had to. And then even when I did have free time, like when I was younger, I didn't wanna spend it looking at different clothes or trying on a bunch of different things. like. I wanted to have fun with my friends or I wanted to dive into other hobbies. I wanted to read. I thought I was gonna be a poet and a playwright and a screenwriter. Like I thought that was gonna be what I did and that's how I chose to spend my spare time. Then the third thing that I think is really crazy too, understanding these first two things now, right? That people, majority of people are usually gonna dress kind of based of what's around them because they don't want to be judged. That's fine, that makes sense. And people don't want to spend any extra time that they have studying up to really like dress good, right? Understanding that that's a lot of people's base means that a lot of their style is gonna start from a safe place and that's fine. And the crazier part is, is it's so weird to say that we don't have personal style, personal style is dead, when you don't actually know the person to know if how they're dressing is expressive for them. You know, like that's the other crazy part. Like for all you know, this person always wears black and today they wore white and that was them expressing something different. You don't know, like you don't know this person. <laughs> and I really, really hate that kind of judgmental side to this conversation because it's like, this should be an invitation. 
And unfortunately, what a lot of style and a lot of fashion, especially for women, especially for women who, if you're a millennial, you remember the Who Wore It Better Wars. You remember Tyra Banks getting dragged when she was 130 pounds, which was a normal weight. Like, you remember that stuff, and that stuff sits with you. And to just tell a bunch, a bunch of people, like, hey, just get over that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, just start dressing crazy, even though you live in the Midwest. Hey, start wearing more expressive stuff, because... I don't think your style is expressive enough is also a really like funny thing. It's like if personal style is personal and people are allowed to express themselves how they want to express themselves, why are you mad that they're not expressing it in the way that you want? Like that's the other weird thing, right? Because again, you're allowed to express yourself how you want to. You can be as bold and as bright as you want to or you can be neutrals and quiet luxury you can do that like how these people are talking about people need to just express themselves also feels kind of like i don't want to say like hypocritical or ironic but it's just really funny that it's like you're mad because you think everyone's dressing the same but you also want people to express themselves the same way that you like to express yourself through fashion you know what i mean like i just find that so so interesting and so having kind of started there right like very unsure very insecure just because of how I grew up in that context. I love to give people that context because it's so important when we're having these conversations around style and around building yourself and around building your confidence and building your wardrobe. The beginnings matter. Where you grew up, what you were exposed to, what your family kind of like put on you because one of the reasons I always dressed nicer and felt that pressure was that was something my parents always put on me. Like, you're not about to leave this house and look homeless. You're not about to be out here looking like we don't take care of you. You need to take pride in yourself and if you wanna feel good, you gotta look good. Like that was drilled into me. So that is a part of me. So being forced by circumstance to develop thick skin because I just was different and there was nothing I could do to fit in. There just wasn't. Um, and learning to have that radical acceptance of that and then also having my parents kind of drill in, you should look good, you should care about how you look. That has impacted now, decades later, how I approach fashion. And so here are a couple of things. If you really want to find your style, here's where I truly started thinking about even all the way back like in college when I finally got access to stuff that fit my body. <laughs> Maybe not amazingly, but just like having more access to clothes, having stuff out there. One, in this big age in 2024, you have access to so many clothes. Go out and try them. There is no harm in going to the mall, going to Target, going to Walmart, and just trying anything that catches your eye and really just paying attention to what you like and what you don't. You don't have to buy anything. That's something these brands and these companies have us trained. Like, ooh, if I'm spending time outside, I need to go ahead and buy something to reward myself because I've been outside all day. I need to go ahead and buy this piece because it might sell out. Retrain yourself from that. Let that go. I want you to learn to just start having fun with clothes. And even in a small dose, even if fashion isn't your thing or you're really not trying to do overly styled stuff, just finding your style, a huge part of that is understanding what you like and what you don't like, which is very simply by trying things. And as you're trying things, I urge you not to quickly text your friend, not to quickly text your family like, okay, I'm gonna send you a picture and let me know what you think. Because the second part about having good style, really good style, is it's based off of you. It's not based off of what your friends like. It's not based off of what somebody else likes. You need to learn to trust yourself, trust that voice in your head. And you're only going to do that by going out and trying things and then making that decision for yourself. And it's not set in stone. That's the other great thing about style. It's going to evolve. If you look at how my style evolved, I was definitely the corporate girly in suits, kind of J. Crew. Then I went to like, I'm a neutrals only girly. And now I'm in my like Tracy Ellis Ross and training vibes. Like, I just want fun. I want to have fun in life. I want to have fun in style. And that's just where I am in my 30s. And it can change. And that's okay. But if you keep asking everybody else for their opinion, knowing that a lot of people like to kind of stay in the same place or just do end up in the same place, you're not going to really grow and evolve and trust yourself and make those decisions that are going to be best for you and your style. Because again, this really is an exercise of just figuring out what you like, figuring out what you don't like in terms of just like the types of tops, types of pants, types of dresses, the material themselves, right? The cuts, things like that. So the second thing is to get inspiration. And here's the thing, like, I really hate that everyone's like, trends are so awful and da 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 and aesthetic, like, uh. These are not bad words. And here's why, because if you search personal style, do you know how much stuff comes up? It's so much stuff. And so it's really important to be able to have the right words and understand what things are called to be able to better search for them and give yourself a good starting place. So I don't feel like using the word aesthetic, like if you're looking for effortless aesthetic, if you're looking for tomboy aesthetic or street style aesthetic, I don't think using that word is bad because it's gonna help you narrow down 
exactly what you're searching for. And talking to a lot of the girlies, I have just found apparently adding that word, you get a lot better results than just generally searching like effortlessly chic. You just do, right? And I talked about this a lot in my like habits to develop good style is just like, I personally like Pinterest to create my mood board. And the thing about as you're looking at your mood board, there's a couple things I want you to take in mind. You don't have to be afraid of trends, okay? I don't know why everyone keeps acting like trends are such a bad word because the truth is when you find what you like, it's no longer a trend, right? Like corporate core right now, if you watch my video on the trends for 2024, corporate core is a trend right now. Wearing blazers, wearing trousers. To me, that's not a trend. I love blazers. I love workwear. I have worn those pieces for years. I will continue to wear those pieces for years. So that to me is not a trend, right? When you see a certain color, if you like that color, that no longer is a trend. That becomes part of your personal style. And I really urge you to reframe it like that. You don't have to take every trend that's out there, right? You don't have to wear just what's trending. But if you do see something that you like, don't feel like I can't invest money or I can't add that to my wardrobe because it's a trend and it might go out of style. You are now starting to look at not just like what's trending, but the outfits in terms of like the pieces themselves and what really stands out and fits what you found out that you like, right? Like those jackets and those tops, the fabrics, you are now looking at how you're gonna be able to put those together to create outfits because you learned what you like in terms of the individual pieces themselves. And as you're building out your mood board, it is learning how you like to pair certain things together, what you think looks good together, giving kind of a name to that, right? But a lot of finding your personal style is understanding what's out there and then understanding if you like that, then translating that into your wardrobe, not just for this season, but for years to come. And that's why I really think it's really important not to steer away from trends and not be afraid of stuff that might that might be a little more standout-ish compared to your personal style because you don't have to copy and paste that exactly, okay? Like you absolutely don't. What you're really looking for is the details that you like that you feel like are gonna be wearable for you, whether it's an outfit combination or a specific piece. That always should be your takeaway as you're looking at these things. It's never really to copy and paste. Like that's okay to start, but if you're really trying to develop your style, you're gonna start branching out because again, what you notice, what you probably notice as you try and copy and paste, say that fire ass outfit you found on Pinterest, is it's not hitting the same on you because you have a different body shape or you just have a different style or a different taste. And those are all things that you're gonna wanna incorporate. Then the very last thing that I found worked really well for me is basically a version of immersion therapy. I wanted to dress nicer, so I got rid of like sweatpants and things like that so I didn't have the option to wear those clothes. And then I also just started wearing my nicer clothes to more casual occasions, to the coffee shop, to run groceries, actually getting more dressed up for those things. So it stopped feeling awkward. It stopped feeling weird. And I wasn't as self-conscious about it or worried about what people were going to say. And the more I did that, the easier it became for me then to play around more with my style, really dive into what I loved and really able to say that actually isn't for me. And you really won't know that until you do push that boundary for yourself. And that's why I say to start small, right? Like, it's not like, okay, I have to put the ballroom gown on to go to the mall. I'm not saying that at all. But there is a reason that getting dressed every day can help you to better find your style and pushing yourself to wear those clothes for more regular occasions for the everyday will really help not just improve your style, but improve your confidence because you are gonna get to a point where you are developing that thicker skin. You already know what you like. You're not asking everybody if they like it, so you're already trusting kind of the decisions you're making. Now you're going out into the world and going, even if somebody does say something, which truthfully they really won't still, but even if somebody does, like, who are you unless you're paying a bill, I don't care. Like, I like what I like and it doesn't matter what's trending, it doesn't matter what's in style, it's my style and I'm allowed to wear what I like to wear. Even if that is a cute workout set, even if that is your Lululemon set, right? Even if that is athleisure, even if it is sweats, you're allowed to like what you like. And the more that you give yourself that permission by leaving the house in your clothes to do things, the more you're gonna feel that way and the more empowered you're gonna feel. Because ultimately, like I said, I don't want you to just find what makes you look good. I wanna help you find what makes you feel good. And if you think that this video was really, really helpful and you like the tips and tricks you saw here, I actually think you're really gonna enjoy my entire playlist on how to improve your style. I go in depth about understanding your body type, cleaning out your closet to really understand your style more, to really help you fast track that style transformation that you're wanting to have. And if you like videos like this that are designed to help you find what's gonna work for you, not just in style, but in life, in travel, in beauty, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a video. And thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you over there.